Coming up next, it's a UFC heavyweight division collision. This dude is a submission magician. I am very thankful I am not fighting him here tonight, and it's really a case of pick your poison. He has so many different chokes in his arsenal and has been a master of getting these fights exactly where he wants them. There are black belts and there are guys like this who can do jujitsu at a level that not many people, regardless of the time spent, can truly get to. His understanding of position is truly unbelievable. He always has the frame. The moment you start to press into him, he's always underhooking, always looking for the next escape move, but not to get back to his feet. Right. He wants to go from bottom to top. If he's in the top position, you are constantly, constantly in danger. Don't think he can't submit you from the bottom, right. but his position of choice will always be in the top position sitting yes. in that beautiful half -point. Yeah, his striking also has improved a lot, but no secret as to what he'll be trying to do in this matchup tonight. All right, here he is, your teammate, the former UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Cain Velazquez. And a lot of people ask what could have been had he been able to stay healthy. No denying his status, though, is one of the best heavyweights we've ever seen. It's unbelievable that you consider him one of the greatest of all time, even though he's missed about four years due to injury. But when you look back to the Junior Dos Santos trilogy, getting knocked out in the first round, losing his heavyweight championship, to dominating him over the course of 10 rounds, is unreal to watch. The cardio, the pace, the pressure, the crispness, the tightness, and the accuracy that Kane possesses in his striking was truly amazing. No wasted energy. The Antonio Rodrigo fight, Noguera, the Noguera fight oh. was truly a master class in striking. Yes. We came finishing them in one round. Our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. More than a decade separates these two fighters when it comes to the age with similar height and the same reach. All right, now for the official introductions, we go to the veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Loving. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the sold out arena in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It's time! Five rounds in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 34 wins, 10 losses, one draw, and one no contest. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 240 pounds, fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Antonio Rodrigo Minotauro. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 14 wins, three losses. He stands six feet one inch tall, weighing in at 240 pounds. Fighting out of San Jose, California. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a former UFC heavyweight champion, King. Okay, guys, protect yourself at all time. Obey my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now. Go back to your corner. They touch him up, and we are underway. You ready? You ready? All right, here's the mixed martial arts legend, former UFC interim heavyweight champion, Minotauro Noguera. He has been in there with the best heavyweights in the world. No difference here tonight. And it's got to be interesting when you face a challenge like this because you know how hard this guy is to put away. You got to leave something in the gas tank. You can't blow it all out early, or more often than not, you're getting finished by Minotauro in the latter rounds. 
stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. And they separate. Outstanding kick there by Nogueira. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. Oh, nice. Nice. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands. Oh! What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. We'll finish this fight. Holding on to him here, not really doing too much, perhaps just looking to recover. And now he's got the tie clinch. Boy, tie clump. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? Nogueira's worked hard here. Now he has the back. Under three minutes remain in round one. Nice defense on the single leg takedown. You can tell he's worked on that. Uppercut to the head. Instead, it's blocked by Kane Velasquez. When you're in a clinch, you can pull down on the head and land these beautiful punches to the head. This is exactly what he needed to get a takedown and secure the position. Nogueira's looking to go from the full to the half guard here. Opponent not having it. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Oh, looked like that left hand found the target. Found the target as it has on so many occasions tonight. Oh, reversal here, DC. What a way to switch the position. Fantastic movement by the bottom fighter. Velazquez has got his back now. So just over 20 total strikes have now found the mark for Kane Velazquez. Velazquez's pass is denied. type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah, no pity pat to this guy. This guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strikes. Second round, straight ahead. All right, so there's the end of the round. He stayed committed to doing damage upstairs and landed a seminal blow in that round. It was accumulation of those strikes. He kept hitting him over and over to the head. Eventually, he found the, the one that really did damage his opponent. You ready? You ready? Second round underway. Look at how he turns his hip over when he throws that kick. Look at how he turns his hip into that leg kick. Looking to establish the jab here. Nicely done by Kane Velasquez. Right, he closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Now he's got the Muay Thai Fantastic time on that move. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. He actually goes to an omoplata. Great pressure going forward by the top fighter now. You can certainly count on one hand. The no not tapping out tonight. All right, side control now, DC. When you get side control in the fight, what are you looking at? When I get to the side control in the fight, and I believe this young man should do the same thing, it's secure first. Grab everything in tight. Make sure your elbows are in. Make sure you've got something locked in so your opponent doesn't just squirm away. Punch short punches, but try to make the opponent make a choice. Either he turns back into you, you take your front headlock, or he turns in the opposite direction. You throw your hook in, and you start looking to get a choke off. All the ground and pound strikes continue to rain down. The opponent better move out of harm's way or the referee's gonna stop this. He better start to move, and when his opponent starts to posture, he needs to put his feet on the hips, push him away to try to escape this very, very dangerous position. 
Back mount now. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on the ground. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. Well, the ground and pound has been on point tonight. Good work here by Velasquez. He's putting him in exactly the position he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. I mean, how many can he take? Pretty good work with the ground and pound here by Kane Velasquez. Thirty seconds to go in the round. While working pretty effectively from the top here, nice ground and pound by Velasquez. Final seconds here. All right, that's the end of round number two. All right, that's the end of the round as we show you some of the highlights over those five minutes. Really a clinic when it comes to the ground and pound. Yeah, man, this is what you're taught. When you're learning to become a ground and pound fighter, you want to do it exactly like he did. Gain posture, have height, control hands and wrists, land strikes, don't throw too many, throw just enough control, throw again, control. He did it perfect. Olha, o round foi excelente. All right, next round is underway. We will see if he can pick up where he left off, particularly when it comes to the ground and pound. That was vicious. I mean, it was vicious. It was vicious. It was shades of Habib Nurmagomedov yes. versus Michael Johnson. Habib Nurmagomedov versus Conor McGregor. Just able to get to a great posture, control the feet, and land every single strike with vicious intent. It's hard to do that without losing your opponent. This young man has masters. He has masters. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. All right, operating inside the closed guard now. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the Kimura. And this might just be a matter of time. What a beautiful Kimura finish by this great fight. And I don't care how high your threshold is for pain. When you're in that compromised state, better to tap and fight another guy. It's so crazy because people think the pressure's on your arm. It's all your shoulder. When somebody has a really good Kimura, it feels like they're going to break your shoulder. That's why you have to tap. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He was able to get the fight to the ground exactly where he wanted it. Eventually, his opponent gave him an opportunity to get a submission. He did that, and he should be very proud of the work he did tonight in the octagon. So there he is, your winner by submission. That is a finish they will likely be talking about for some time. Big win, major statement made to the rest of this division. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Levine has called a stop to this contest at 1 minute, 55 seconds of the third round. Playing the winner by tap out, Antonio Henrique Minotauro Nogueira. Well, the celebration is on in his corner, and hard to blame these guys. Sort of waiting to exhale, get a huge win tonight, and not just the win, but they get it by submission. They knew what they had in front of them. They knew how tough a competitor his opponent was, but they also knew 